Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Yonit Arthur. You are on The Steady Coach, and I am back with another success story. This one is coming to you from Austin, who is here to share his story of recovery from chronic dizziness symptoms that started with an attack of BPPV, or benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. This is in alignment with many of your stories here on my channel. I think you'll learn a lot and get some hope and reassurance from hearing his story. The other really important component of Austin's story is that he has suffered from obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD. So he describes how that played into the chronic symptoms and how he needed to change his mindset and approach to them in order to recover. As always, if you enjoy this conversation, please leave questions and comments. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video, share it. Or if you're listening to this as a podcast, please follow the podcast and head on over to YouTube to say hi. I love hearing from my listeners. All right, everyone, please enjoy this conversation with Austin. All right, Austin, thank you so much for being here with me today. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm very excited to hear your story. We are coming into this basically cold. Like I have no idea what you've gone through. So I, I have a feeling we're going to hear some similar themes to some of the things we've talked about in previous success stories, right. but every story is unique. So I just, I can't wait to hear yours. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm Austin and my journey starts out with, I've always been kind of an anxious kid even at birth, just from my upbringing. I kind of had helicopter parents, so anything was wrong with me, I'd be at the doctor, it'd be a big deal. They wouldn't, mm -hmm. they were doing the best that they, that they could with what they had. So yeah, I've always had that OCD, anxious personality, something's wrong with me, I gotta figure it out, you know. But I, I got better. So that was, that was really bad up until high school. And then after high school, I got into the workforce and that got really good. I was loving life, having fun. Anxiety really wasn't a big problem anymore in my life. And funny enough, I've always kind of had a deep fear of dizziness, mm. even, yeah, so that kind of, it was always in the back of my mind, even when I would get just like regular dizziness standing up too quick, I would really freak out and it would kind of trigger my anxiety. So even before this crazy vestibular event happened and all this developed, I was always kind of uncomfortable about that. Yeah. Yeah. How old are you now, Austin, if you don't mind I'm me asking? I'm 27. You're 27. 27. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And where are you located in the world? I'm in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're you're out in the workforce. You're working. You kind of have this background, uh, discomfort with dizziness, kind yes. of this background, is, anxiety. Yeah, greatest fear. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So not just a little background. It was something you were really worried about. Yeah. This, okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So what happened to set this all off then for you? Well, funny enough, I was just thinking about it the other day and I kind of forgot that this happened, but so I was in my, my go getter phase. I was like, all right, I feel like I'm accomplishing stuff. I kind of wanted to tackle my dizziness fear. So I started intentionally making myself dizzy and then I started getting hyper-focused on that. Okay. And then not two weeks later, I actually had the BPPV. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I was also sick as well, too. And I had stuff going on with this ear. So I didn't know if it was BPPV or mm -hmm. the vestibular neuritis. Mm -hmm. so, and I was having tinnitus in this ear. So I was just looking stuff up and I was knowing things I shouldn't because I'm not a doctor, you know. Yeah, I was, I became a master in it. I was just, I knew everything. I knew everything. I had like a PhD and just from looking stuff up. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I tell people often they know more than I do. 
I sometimes they'll learn they'll they'll be like, what about this study? And I'll be like, when did that come out? But yes, it's and it's not always helpful, is it? Reddit and everything like that. You can if you Google just instances like, is this normal? And blah 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 blah. You you'll find it. There's stories for everything, mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you had this first event. You immediately went down the rabbit hole. Just. Yeah. like researching just i'm wondering research. so what was what was going on physically like what how did you know something was wrong um i knew something was going wrong because i didn't initially feel it or even know because it happened mostly at night but i'd lay down and the room was spinning my vision mm -hmm. So I would turn to one side and the room would start to spin and then stop. And so that's how I came to the conclusion. It was BPPB. Yeah. Okay. So you had that going on. This started happening at night. You Googled it. You said, okay, I think this is what I have. Yes. What did you do next? Uh, what I did next was the maneuvers that they recommended. Mm -hmm. And that, that did help. So after about two weeks of doing that, that, that all helped mm -hmm. initially getting uh, rid of the hardcore vertigo. The spinning. Yeah. yeah. But I imagine that wasn't the end of no, the story. No. I actually got better and then worse and then better and worse as it goes. Okay. Yeah. So tell me more about that. So at that point, you kind of got rid of the BPPV. What, mm -hmm what did you start feeling? Like what kinds of sensations did you have at that point? I had at the worst, it got to, I developed what's called Alice in Wonderland syndrome. I don't know if you've ever heard of that where I would wake up and I would feel small and things would look really big mm -hmm. and things would look misplaced. Like I would look at things and it would take like three or four seconds for my brain to catch up, and realize where I am. So a lot of disorientation and my night balance was not good. I would feel like I was walking on a boat. Yeah. Yeah. What else was it? Was stuff interfering with your daily routine? Yeah, I was, I'd be very derealized when I'd walk outside and, tired and not I'd look at my hands and I, I just wouldn't feel real. It feels like I wasn't on earth anymore. Yeah. Yeah. What about work? Did this affect your ability to work? Um, well, yeah, at, at first, um, it would kind of go away when I was working and I'd have something to do. Mm -hmm. That's how I kind of came to the conclusion that this I'm not really broken. There's nothing seriously wrong with me. But work started to get slow for me. And I'd constantly have to think of things to do to keep me busy because we were finishing up with projects and we were at the the end of those. And then it really started to kick because I would I'd have nothing to do and I would just focus on the symptoms that I'd be feeling all day. Yeah. Okay. Got so it. I had to leave work. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So you already started to notice a link between your focus on it and just yes. not having something to do yeah. and not just being distressed by it, but it sounds like the symptoms were actually worse too. Physically, you could feel the symptoms yeah. being worse at that, yes. at that time. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this goes on. This starts to interfere with your work. Uh, you start to notice this link between, you know, not being super busy and the symptoms getting worse and worse. So what happened then? So after then I had, so initially I had to, I had to leave work and I got home and I had a big freak out and that's where things got to the worst. Got it. That they ever did. Yeah. It was after right. quitting work. Cause then I, then all I would do is just research stuff and research stuff and just, that's my biggest tip is if you're doing that, stop doing that. Get off there. Get all of the get all of the crazy things out. It could like if you have tumors, get those checked out. 
And then after they check you out, get off the internet, get off of it. Yes. This your solution here. Yeah. Yes, uh, the very well well stated. And I think you and I can both empathize with people who want to know all the answers. I mean, when it's when you feel that yeah. physically uncomfortable, you're just like, yeah. tell me what to do exactly. to not feel like this anymore. It's yeah. It's right? kind of like a breakup. How like you want that closure at the end of it, but you don't need to know why things go down and you kind of come to that conclusion. Right. Something it, you have to come to on your own. That's an also a good point. Yeah. It, it's, I think everyone reaches that point a little differently too. Some people see one doctor and they're like, oh, okay, I'm going to let this go now. And some people, it's like going on for years and they've seen 15 doctors and they're still searching for the thing that's wrong with them. Yeah. Understand. Yeah. That's, right? I feel bad for those people. Yeah. Right. So did you go to a doctor during this time? Um, I went to, I got one primary doctor mm -hmm. and the only testing I got was a blood work test. Mm -hmm. And the, the only reason I only got the blood work was because I'm very young and I had that in the back of my head. I was like, I, I know there's nothing wrong with me. This makes sense because I've had the background of anxiety and I had the BPPV that resolved Okay. It, it just all made sense to me. So I, I fortunately didn't double down on continuing to go to specialists and specialists. Yeah. So yeah. I was fortunate in that sense. Yeah. You know, so it sounds like you had an inkling maybe even early, relatively early, hey, this has something to do with anxiety and attention, at least for me. Yes. But it was still so scary that you still had to research and think yeah. about it a lot. Yeah. Cause boy, I got real afraid of, um, uh, vestibular migraines and Meniere's. I was juggling with that for a while. I was like, Oh, I hope. Cause I had, um, pulse, um, pulse anxiety yeah. in one mm -hmm. ear. Mm -hmm. And I was mm -hmm. like, man, maybe my ears going out and I'm getting something wrong with it. But mm -hmm. no, Mm -mm. No, I had to flush that out of my mind. You know? So you had this freak out and you just started Googling like crazy and you were out of work and like things are just going downhill. So can you just describe a day in your life at that time when things were really bad? At my worst, I was there was at my very worst. Things were a 10 out of 10 on the terms of symptoms and freaking out 100% of the time. From the time I woke up till I went to bed. And even I would wake up in the middle of the night, it would be awful because I'd be having my my things. My, so it was mostly derealization and a sensation and I, of movement? or Yes, sensation of movement. And I would get attacks of pure rotational vertigo you were having vertigo too uh, yes. yes wow yeah wow did you try to do the maneuver more like no. oh okay this must be bppv again no no, no. I, because it, it didn't make sense at a point where if i would freak myself out enough and i started doing this on purpose just to prove to myself that if i work myself up enough i can get that rotational vertigo from just stress and i realize that now Oh, Austin, thank you for saying that. Let, yes. Like, let's just enshrine this <laughs> because I have people who get so scared because when they hear the term PPPD, I know, Austin, you're probably an expert on this, but the definition of PPPD says no rotational vertigo. And people are like, does that mean I don't have neural circuit dizziness? No, no. no. It's just the way they defined that particular symptom, which is right. a symptom. I mean, excuse me, not symptom, that particular diagnosis. It's a symptom-based diagnosis, meaning they had to pick lists of symptoms that were included in that diagnosis. Right. And it just happened that they did not pick vertigo, but vertigo can totally be a neural circuit issue. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah. 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 So when you had those, and again, I'm sorry to belabor this point. I just think it's so important for people to hear this because we don't talk about this as much in the success stories. A lot of people don't have vertigo specifically. Right. So you said those would be really intense, like rotational yes. spinning, and it would last for how long? I'd say maybe from 
half an hour to an hour oh. at most until I calm down. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And now, even now, sometimes I'll like get that, like that weird feeling when I'm real stressed out, but then mm -hmm. I could snap myself out of it in, in an instant. I'm like, okay, moving on. Who cares? Right. 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 Like, because it is a normal response for your body to have an, like alarm, a yeah, physical be, alarm because reaction. I had, because I had that initial event, my body knows that. So that's, that's a way now, you know, it understands like, oh, you're stressed out. What's a way to slow you down? Okay. You didn't like this. Here you go. Have that. You're right. Stressed. Exactly. Exactly. Just like for some people it's back pain or tension yes. headaches. It's yes. the I've, same. I thing. also had during this, I had back pain and I was loving that because I was loving the back pain, like really, because it took away from my dizziness. I was like, please give me as I've always had a pain, high pain tolerance. Always. I'd, get, I'd go get dental work without Novocaine and stuff. You know, wow. That high. And I was like, please give me some more of that pain, anything to get rid of that dizziness. Yeah. Good point here, too. I First of all, I hear this a lot. Anything like I, I would take anything over the symptoms I have right now yeah. of dizziness, but also curious little point there when it's like it's so weird my symptoms are swapping like when i have this i don't have the dizziness and vice versa sometimes also kind of an indication that there's a neural circuit thing right. going on right yeah. yeah yeah wow this this sounds horrible so how long was this going on i'd say the worst of it was a month long mm -hmm. like of my just my nightmare I call like it being like that every day, like sort of yeah. vertigo all day, panicking. Yeah. Good. Look. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So a month long. I'm sorry. What did you ask again? Yeah. I was just wondering how that, how long that really bad phase was, but oh yeah, actually, about a month. it occurs to me. So t let's, let's just put this on a timeline for people. So when did the very first symptoms start? Like how, when, when was that? That was, I'd say May, 2013 or no, not 13, uh, 23, 2023. Yes. 23. So May, 2023 things start. And when did you get to your low point? When was that? My low point. Mm -hmm. That was November. Wow. So you were yeah. progressively getting worse from May till November. And then you had the worst November ever. Yeah. I okay. had actually got really good because I started an SSRI. Got it. And that helped out. And then, but while I was on the SSRI, it got to its worst. So, yeah. Got it. So yeah. the, so it sounds like things started in May, things got bad. Your GP, your, your primary care maybe said, Hey, you may want to try an SSRI. This is anxiety yeah. or something like that. Yes. Yes. And then temporarily that kind of made things better, but then things still got worse. Yeah. They still got, got it. Got worse. Okay. So you go through the month of your nightmare and what starts to change? Like how did things pick up from there? I'd say what initially changed was I was just starting to get tired of just being in my room all the time. Cause I would just lock myself in there. So when it would get, I just got to a point where I was like, man, this is going to be here, whether I'm down here or up there. So I was like, I'm just going to react to this differently. And I go upstairs and joke with my family while I was having these intense, intense things. And I just slowly desensitized myself to them. And then I would stop experiencing them so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So when around when did you find my channel and some of the resources that I have? When was that? Um, I'd say a couple of weeks after the BPPV incident, actually, I'd known about you for quite a while, but I, um, kind you of didn't stopped. believe me. <laughs> it's not, it's not that I didn't believe you. It's that when you have something that intense, yes, you, you're only, it's only reasonable to think that it's something crazy going on with you. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And I'm, I'm giggling about it, but honestly, Austin, like it's, this is 
what happens with so many people. They find me early and then like they'll come back a year later and be like, okay, I think this is what I have now. But people have to be ready to 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 hear that and and it yeah. is terrifying and yeah. I'm glad people go the medical route first. They need, they do need to make sure there's yeah. nothing physically. Get the crazy wrong. things out of the way. Right. If, once they start re referring you to crazy specialists, then you stop. Then right. You stop, I think. Right. So November rolls around. You're just at your worst. Did anything that I said kind of stick in your head and make you think, wait, hang on a second? Or was it just that you kind of had an inkling this whole time, maybe this is a neural circuit problem? And you finally just gave in? Like what? I think it was the echo of what you said and then mm -hmm. finally experiencing feeling good. Mm -hmm. and, Got it. Uh, and you asked, you also uh, recommended Dan from- uh, Dan Buclio? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, like awesome. even just mm -hmm. listening to you talk about my dizziness would trigger me. So I kind of transitioned over to him. But you guys pretty much have the same message. It's yeah. a lot of the same message. Yeah. Yes. Some some nuances in the approach, but overall yeah. message is yeah. you're going to be okay. And fine. this is a neural circuit problem. It's just a 100%. brain error. Yeah. yeah. The same, same message. Yeah. Everyone can get better. I'm a hundred percent. Yeah. And also, you know, Austin, thank you for normalizing that too, because I, I don't care who people are listening to as long as they're getting messages of hope and safety. And it is hard to listen to someone describing your symptoms. It is, yeah. it is. And so I've actually made it a goal for some people. Like if you find me triggering or the comments on my channel triggering, right. then you know, you're getting better when you can come to the comments of my channel and be like, Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. And you're not triggered anymore. That's a sign you're really, truly recovering. Yeah. yeah. Hey, okay. Totally. So can you get specific about what you did to desensitize yourself. So one day you're just like, I'm not going to let this control my life anymore. And so then you just started to get more exposure. How did you get through that when things felt so bad? Initially, when you're in that position, it comes down to just a choice of how you react. And I just bit the bullet one day and I was like, I just knew I was like, oh man, I'm going to feel bad down here. If I feel that bad down here and I feel really bad, What's the worst can happen if I go outside and just start walking and doing stuff again? And I initially did that and that was, it was pretty rough. Got better, got worse. It was kind of like a graph where you see like, yeah, super zoom in it's <laughs> pits and valleys, pits and valleys, but it was a, it was a gradual climb to where I am now. How did you deal with those dips? Like when it would go down, cause you'd have all these moments of, I don't like calling them setbacks. I think of them as just as normal parts of recovery, but how'd you deal with those when they happened? I just, I just, you just take it as it comes. It's something you have kind of have to take it as it comes. You know, uh, my coping mechanism was I kind of found and it kind of gave me a sense of control and I did for a while. I did kind of control my symptoms. I can now, I mean, I don't do it anymore, but I can make myself really dizzy and have that if I, if I choose to, it doesn't scare me as much anymore. So mm -hmm. I would, yeah, I would do that. And that's you would do it on I, purpose. Yeah, I would do it on purpose. Oh. Like it was kind of, I, I like to play video games. So it was kind of like a challenge to me. <laughs> yeah. Austin, that's, that's a really, I mean, that's a valid way of doing this because it reminds me of, I don't know if you saw Mark H's recovery story. He, he talked about how he would go into the city and things would look really distorted and he would say yeah these symptoms are exactly what my brain needs in order to adapt or this is the yeah. medicine my brain needs so he would be like bring it on come on let's let's do more symptoms we got to yeah. do this so the brain can adapt that's what you were doing essentially yeah. yeah so there's there's levels to this you know when you're in that freak out it's okay to to be there and feel it you know, hold on. Sorry, I got people. Come no, on. no worries. I'm, I have dog. I have a dog and children and yeah. all sorts of noise sometimes, so it's all good. Yeah. So there's there's levels to this, mm -hmm. where I did just kind of wallow in it a little bit, and that was kind of that's okay. 
you know, but you can't stay there, you know, so. You know what you're describing, Austin? You're not using these words, but I, I just want to frame it this way for people so they know. What you're describing is like the gold standard of OCD treatment, yeah. exposure and response prevention. So basically it's when you say, yep, it's like this now, I'm freaking out and you just let it happen. Yeah. And people think that that is way too simple. There's no way that works. It, it does is that work. simple. It is that simple. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Honestly. And all the fancy stuff we do, there are lots of ways that you can do this. So it's not always, it doesn't always look exactly like that, but at its core, when you do that, you are actually sending your brain a big message of safety. Yeah. Yep. And that's the whole, that's the whole thing is pushing, pushing your limits, pushing your limits and then applying that safety. Mm -hmm. And then your world opens up. So right. my room, so my world was my room for a while and I had symptoms a hundred percent of the time. And then I pushed out of my room, was getting uncomfortable outside and then I'd be comfortable in my bed. I'd have a new safe point because things were a lot worse outside and then they started calming down. That's when I really started to know, I was like, oh, okay, this is, there's some inconsistencies in here. Mm, yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, this is odd. That used to trigger me and now it doesn't. That yeah. doesn't make sense. Um, so how, like, I, again, I'm sorry to get so granular on this, but mm -hmm. I think people yeah, need to, get, to know how to do this. Nitty so, gritty. How, how did you know when to stop pushing? So let's say you're pushing, you're trying to make yourself dizzy on purpose. You're going out, you're doing something that is quite triggering to you. At, at what point do you know, okay, that's enough for today? Um, just when I had that thought that pops in my head that is this, did I do enough? Then I'll be like, yeah, I did enough. Cause I don't, you don't have to torture yourself doing this. Because even now, if you go crazy, you can make yourself dizzy. Anyone. I mean, dizziness is normal. And that's what I've come to the conclusion of. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of the things you experience are, they're probably happening, but your brain is just amplified. Like I would see like stop signs sway and I'd be like, whoa, the, my vision's just swaying. No, your brain's just in that danger response. And that's what I think this um, vestibular migraines are. I thought I had that for a while. I kind of almost, I'm not a doctor, but I almost don't believe in them anymore. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. I mean, take it for a grain of salt. I'm not a doctor anymore, but I don't, I was experiencing everything that the tea of what it has. And now I don't have those anymore. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. The, because honestly, so the brain is what perceives balance information. Mm -hmm. So the brain can basically make any symptom it wants. <laughs> I mean, it yes. can pretty much any, I've seen people show up on the channel that ask questions and they'll say, what about this symptom? What about this symptom? And I'm like, I have a list of like 1500 symptoms and, and growing yeah. because it can literally make any symptom. Yeah. Yeah. I um, mean, I can you know. even probably grow that list. I had where one eye saw light in a different color, like a little bit warmer if you close one eye versus the other. And that's, mm -hmm. I found out that that's normal. I probably always had that and it's nothing serious, nothing you got to get checked out. Yeah, there yeah. you go. I see there. There's another one. You're right. That's not on my list. I'll add that. It's now 1501. <laughs> yeah. D did you have other vision related symptoms as well? Yeah, I had a lot of visual vertigo, like things would like, I'd see like, I used to play this game where it was a battleship on my phone and I was having these freakouts and the start screen would show the ships and they would do like this panning out motion like this slowly mm -hmm. and kind of go like that. And that would give me that sensation that I'm moving and it felt like how I had the BPPV and then I'd quickly like uncover my head and like realize the room actually isn't spinning. Wow. It was just a small feeling. Yeah. Wow. That, that was weird. That was really weird. Yeah. So did that just, so another question people will ask me is, okay, what do I do for that? 
yo, neat, I have visual vertigo. What do I do for that? And it sounds like you didn't do any special exercise for it. You just started to expose yourself to things that Mm -hmm. were triggering and just let them be. Yeah. So like, that's, that's really all you have to do is just continue to go and realize it's going to stink a little bit, just like anything. You pick up a guitar, you're not going to be good at it the first time, but you keep going, it gets better. No, yeah, it'll get to a point where this probably don't ever think about it again. Yeah, it's like a breakup, you know. Yeah. yeah, so it's something that your brain eventually will adapt to as long as you're not constantly still giving it messages of fear about it. Yeah, and I kind of got that out of my vocabulary of adapting to it. I just, I just realized a lot of the stuff that I was experiencing were normal in my brain since it was on such a high alert, high dial, it would over amplify things, you know, Mm -hmm. that, that sensitivity dial. And that, once that went down, I stopped getting all my stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So I'm wondering then, so one of the things that is a little different from between the approach that Dan Buglio takes, which again, is this is a nuance, not a major Mm -hmm. difference in approach. And the one that I take is that I tend to ask people to kind of look honestly at what's been going on in their lives and say, Mm -hmm. what might have triggered this? Like, why would my nervous system go into the state of alarm? And I'm wondering if you've done any thinking about that, or if you had to do any work on that while you were doing this. Yeah. Some, so this happened, uh, during some of the most stressful, uh, some of the most stressful times in my life, this all started to unfold. And I'm Mm -hmm. realizing that now looking back, this is something also you have to, you can't look, connect the dots looking forward. You can only do it once you're in a state where you feel like you're recovered. You know, I'm not really recovered. I was never broken. Mm -hmm. I mean, (laughs) I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you feel like, now's the time when you're looking back and saying hmm yeah i was building a yeah i was mm-hmm. working a lot and coming home and building a home addition yeah mm-hmm. just crazy times and isn't a time crunch and mm-hmm. other things were falling apart in my life so yeah, yeah those stressful times make you more susceptible to these things right so what's your advice then for people who are going through stressful times or who might be more susceptible, like what could, what would you do differently? I mean, I know you learned a lot from this experience, mm-hmm. so I, you may not look back and say, oh, I wish it didn't happen. But if you knew then what you knew now, what would you do differently when it came to that stress? Um, knowing what I know now and talking to myself before I got to the point to probably prevent this happening, mm-hmm. I would I would tell myself that, hey, you need to speak up for yourself and learn how to say no and take that time for yourself. And that's okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So are you, do you feel like this experience taught you to do that? Like, are you better at doing that now? Yeah. Yeah. I'm more, I'm more, I'll tell you no, if I don't want to do something now. Wow. I used to kind of always be that person that would just like, even though I really didn't want to, I would, I would do it. Mm. Now I just. I genuinely don't want to do it. I'll be like, no, I just don't really don't feel like doing that. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. You know, Austin, you're, you're speaking exactly to why I say the things that I say about like needing to look back in the past and look at emotions and all that stuff. It's not because I'm trying to get people to like look at old trauma for no reason. It's that to me, something needs to change about someone's approach to life. It's not just changing the approach to symptoms. Something else needs to change because we got here somehow. And for a lot of people, those past experiences, they're not like the secret. They just, they they explain why someone was responding the way they were. Yeah, story. Yeah. 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 And for people who grow up with a lot of support and love, I think a lot of times that adjustment happens maybe a little more quickly or a little more easily once people realize, oh crap, I was approaching things in a way that wasn't working for me. Yeah. 
And so then it's a, it's a shift. They transform, they change, their habits change, and they move forward. I think where people often need to do more work is when they've had so much stress or so many difficult experiences that they can't change. Like it's not, they're not able to change yet. And to me, that's, that's why I talk about those things so much. And it sounds like you've, you've implemented changes. Yes. Yes, I have. Yeah. So, okay. So catch us up. So what, how are you feeling nowadays? What's, what's, what are, what's your life like? What, what are the symptoms like? How, how do you feel? My symptoms uh, I got to a point where I just truly don't care if they're there. They don't, I have things to look forward to throughout the day. So I just don't, I don't care. I look forward to lunch and I'm like, mm -hmm. eh, I don't care. I'm dizzy. I'm going to go eat my favorite food here soon. And mm -hmm. I'd say I, I still have a couple residual things that are stupid, but they're manageable because I don't care about them anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, they don't bother me anymore. I just keep going. Don't care though. They'll, they'll probably go away a hundred percent when I don't care a hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> probably some little residual caring there, but I don't care enough to dig down to even look at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you had to say, again, I always find this odd, but people usually put a number on it. So like 95% gone. I'd like say that. I'm a hundred percent good. Cause I know it'll be a hundred percent good one day. You know, Got it. it's just, you know, there's going to be days when you're not, you, you don't feel good and you're dizzy. It's just natural, mm -hmm. you know? So like I was thinking to myself, I was like, man, if there is a day I'm dizzy, does it mean I'm a failure and I'm relapsed? No, it just means you're human and probably you're not feeling the best. Stuff happens. Go lay down. You're fine. You'll be fine. That is such a resilient way of looking at this. I'm just so, I mean, I'm so impressed by that attitude because <laughs> I, I and, and I guess I just want to speak for a second to people who are like, okay, I want to be like that, but I'm just not. And this is the reason for all the other work you're putting in. We're trying to get you to the point where you truly just feel good in your skin and you're yeah. just like, do not care. No. The, say, the second you say, I just truly do not care. It's over. I yeah. mean, the, the symptoms are, are going to just taper off. And would you say that actually, let me ask you, Austin, as you became more indifferent, have the symptoms just gone away? Yeah. Yeah. I don't get the, the visual vertigo anymore. Like things won't really trigger me. Like movement on the TV used to make me feel like, whoa, like I'm getting vertigo. <sighs> mm -hmm. that, that doesn't really happen anymore. I can't remember the last time that's happened to me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, and no more of the vertigo. That's gone. No, no, I mean sometimes when I like first wake up and I'm not really so like I'm at a subconscious level and I'm kind of in my my primitive brain. Mm -hmm. There's still lingerance of of that scariness, but I quickly get out of that. It'll take me like ten minutes to pop out of that to mm -hmm. start start my day. And so you feel a little off, but it's not like full on like it was before. Yeah, but even I, it was probably even back before I had this, I felt a little off, you know? I mean, you're just waking up out of a deep slumber. That's, that's normal. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. It's, I, I think that's where people sometimes have a hard time because they're like, I'm at 95%. I have this residual stuff. And it's really a question sometimes to me, Austin, like, is this actually just normal sensation that you're maybe your brain is a little more sensitive to yeah. because right. you went so, through this thing, right? Yeah. 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 So once you get to that 95%, the other, I think last percent is just normal stuff that most people experience. And that, just letting your brain recalibrate maybe. Yes. And then if you can get, if I can get better from what I went through, there's no, there's no reason you wouldn't get better from that last little 5%, you know, right. it's just a matter of time. I mean, you have people that get paralyzed and start walking again, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's crazy things that happen. If, if they can do that, you can do that with your, with your brain because there is no physical damage. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. So what advice 
what other insights do you want to share with people who are still dealing with this? Insights, um, there's levels to this, right? So it's kind of like grief. And I talk a lot about breakups. So I, I've been through uh, pretty nasty breakups, just and they get me down and low. And that journey was kind of similar in the sense of just, it was a learning process. And I even had uh, physical sensations back then of my breakup. Like I couldn't go to certain stores they would go together with and I'd get start mm -hmm. feeling nauseous and lightheaded. And that was all physical sensations that uh, slowly got better over time as I learned that it's okay that we broke up. Yeah, kind of similar mm -hmm. to this that I don't have to know what 100% happened to me. And yeah. if you're going through that freak out period, stay there for a little bit. It's, it's okay. I went through there. I freaked out. You know, this it's not a straight road. Just be kind to yourself when you're in that. Just yeah. Really, just know that it gets better. Kind of. Yeah. You know, we kind of have to go through that. Yeah. I, I agree. I, I think honestly, Austin, the, the big issue is people, people end up getting stuck there because they're so desperately trying to escape it. Yeah. And if, if you can't sit with it, if you can't be with it, if you're trying to constantly try to like make your way out of it, which make, by the way, is like the most normal human reaction ever. Oh, so we're, totally. we're, tell, we're totally telling you to do exactly I even did that opposite. at one point. Yeah. 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 So no fault for no anyone, fault. but, right. but, but when people are in panic, the worst thing you can do is try to stop mm. panicking. Yeah, <laughs> like try to stop. Quicksand. Quicksand. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You just kind of like gotta let the panic happen. Uh, yeah. You gotta let it happen. Um, and and stop telling yourself stories around what it means. And you didn't see that explicitly, Austin, but maybe you can tell me if you agree with this, that the stories you're telling yourself about what you're experiencing right now means are always gonna make things worse. And yeah, that's what fuels it. Right. Hundred percent. Right. Yeah. So how did you how'd you do that? Like, so you had this story in your head, especially you said you I have OCD oh. tendencies. OCD is all about projecting like what ifs yeah. and catastrophizing, right? So you had all these ideas like this is worse, this is gonna get worse, this is vestibular migraine. I have many years. Like, how did you when you were in the worst of it physically, when you decided I'm gonna get up and start doing things again, how did you keep your mind out of that? quicksand like how did you stop like not let your mind go down those roads um i changed my relationship with what dizziness meant so i started now it's funny to me i get dizzy i feel uh, goofy i don't mm -hmm. care so yeah i slowly transitioned what it meant to be dizzy mm -hmm. i was like i got to the release i mean you're not gonna be dizzy forever you get you get you feel better just it's a sensation just like anything else yeah you know yeah no. and and i mean and we i think you and i both understand in the moment when people are like in the thick of it it certainly does not feel that way it feels right like yeah, my life is over it. yes yeah yes. right but overall it sounds like what you're saying is even if you can make a small step in that direction that might be yes. helpful to people yes that's where it starts that's everyone you have to make that first step of being with it differently. And that's what I think you do a great job with the somatic tracking. Mm. That's a great tool. So you I've use used that? I have. Yeah. Yes. It, yeah. It means you're allowed to be with it in a different light and it means something different. Did you, you do that? Like, so every time you somatic track, did you do something like sit down for 10 minutes or did you do it kind of in real time? Um, I do it more so in real time. I don't think it has to be so structured because then you kind of rely on the structure of it. If I mm -hmm. felt like just really awful, I'd do it. I was mm -hmm. pretty loose with it, but. So can you describe what that looks like? Like, let's just say you're gonna do it in the moment, like on the fly, how would that, like, what would you actually do? So my version of somatic tracking would be kind of your walking version. Mm -hmm. So I would just, I would just downplay all my symptoms. I'd, laugh at it and kind of joke at them. I'm like, look how silly you are. 
you're goofy, you know. Like you're mm-hmm. trying to protect me, but I know I'm okay. My nice. like, my like, like my caveman side, my <laughs> like, <laughs> my goofy side. You know? You'd be silly. Like, primitive yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning that, Austin. I think about that all the time because I, I take dizziness so seriously. I mm-hmm. obviously it's my it's my career, it's my life. I see so many people suffering. I'm constantly thinking so seriously, but the humor helps so much. Like being goofy, being kind of like, ha, ah, whatevs, like yeah. and laughing it off. That's actually brilliant and really, yeah. really helpful. A great tool. Again, you may kind of have to fake it till you make it sometimes. Did yeah, you have I to- did. You did. Okay. But it got to a point where it was actually funny. Yeah, you know, I used to drink to get dizzy. I mean. Right, <laughs> right. And now, now I mean, seeing that parallel can be kind of humorous, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh. Brilliant. Wow. So wonderful. I think this was. It's going to be so helpful for people to hear this. Um, what are you working on now? Like, what are you going to be working on next in your in your life or just not in your recovery, but more in like growing as a person, the stuff that you've learned from this experience, what have you? I think, I think the world's my oyster. I don't have it a hundred percent figured out. I have ideas of my, what I might want to dabble in of, uh, so with like my OCD, I get obsessed and want to get really good at things. So I have uh, like drone racing. I like mm-hmm. that. So, I'm going to try mm-hmm. to see where that takes me. There's a professional league. Who knows what happens? <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. So, yeah. 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 The world's kind of my, I don't have it all figured out yet. All yeah. I know is I got better and yeah. Yeah. They can too. And, and if you had a scary symptom again, do you have more confidence now that you'd know what to do? Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just continue, continue with my day. As if uh, nothing's wrong, it's no big deal. Or yeah. if, if it's so bad, it's okay to go lay down. I mean, if you don't feel good, go lay down, sleep it off. It'll most likely be better tomorrow, you know, or yeah. even in a couple hours. Yeah, brilliant. Well, Austin, this has been such a pleasure. Again, I think yeah. people will learn a lot from hearing your story. I hope so. Yes. So everyone... Uh, thanks for listening. And as always, you can leave questions or comments for me or for Austin below. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're listening to this as a podcast, head on over to the YouTube channel. If you'd like to leave us a comment, we love hearing from you. And you can also like, share, subscribe to my channel, please. You can follow the podcast. All of these things help us reach more people. So thanks. To, thanks to you, Austin. And thanks, everyone. We'll talk Thank to you, you guys soon. Me. All right. Bye. Bye.